Hello students, welcome to lecture 35 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture we will be discussing about Photonic Crystal Devices for Slow Wave Phenomena. So here is the lecture outline, we will have a brief introduction to the topic, we will discuss what is slow light, we will find out the applications of slow light in next generation devices, then we will calculate the delay bandwidth product, we will discuss about slow light in highly dispersive structures, dispersion compensated slow light, zero dispersion slow light and finally we will conclude okay, this particular topic. What is slow light? Slow light with a remarkably low group velocity is a promising solution for buffering and time domain processing of optical signals. So, as you can understand, it is slow. So, when I say slow light, it means it is a light which has got very low group velocity. Okay? So, it also offers the possibility for spatial compression of optical energy and the enhancement of linear and nonlinear optical effects. Photonic crystal devices are especially attractive for generating slow light as they are compatible with on-chip integration and room temperature operation. Thus, they are also able to offer wide bandwidth and dispersion free propagation. In this lecture, we will dive into the background theory, discuss about some recent experimental demonstrations and progress made towards tunable slow light structures based on photonic band engineering. And the practical issues related to the real device and their applications will also be discussed in this lecture. So, what is slow light? So, let us go into the background of light and we all have been knowing this from our school days that you know in vacuum light propagates with a constant velocity c that is e equivalent to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. In optically transparent non-dispersive media, the speed of light propagation is different and the speed is not c it is rather v and v equals omega by k that is equal to c by n. So, what is omega that is the respective angular frequency k is the wave number or yeah k is the wave number and that this ratio omega by k ratio is equivalent to c by n. c is the speed of light in vacuum and n is the refractive index of that medium. So, larger the refractive index, slower will be the velocity of light. At optical frequencies, the refractive index n of transparent materials usually do not exceed several units and hence the speed of light propagation is typically of the same order of magnitude as it is in vacuum. So, if you consider glass, glass is a transparent medium which has got a refractive index of 1.55. So, n is 1.55, so you can understand that v is more or less of the order of c. Okay? So, that is not the case when we are getting slow light. The situation, this particular situation can change dramatically in the case of strongly dispersive media. Okay? So, in that case, although you know the phase velocity of the light is determined by you know vp equals omega by k the speed of the electromagnetic pulse propagation okay so that is basically determined by the group velocity okay so that is d omega by dk okay and that is significantly different from the velocity v so pulse has got different frequency components that's why it's a group okay the phase velocity is typically for only single frequency okay so it is uh, the phase velocity vp so vg is the group velocity that can be written as d omega by dk can also be expanded in this particular form so group velocity is one of the most important electromagnetic characteristics of the medium so with certain reservations you will see that the group velocity vg coincides with the electromagnetic energy velocity and is therefore typically you know referred to as the propagation of light in the medium or propagation speed of light in the medium. So, group velocity determines the speed of electromagnetic energy flow. 
okay so that is basically the propagation speed of light in medium so whenever wherever we are talking about the speed of light propagation we are basically referring to the group velocity not the phase velocity so strong dispersion means that the group velocity vg strongly depends on the frequency and can be substantially different from c so in the case of slow light which is the subject of interest in this particular uh, lecture the electromagnetic pulse propagates through the dispersive medium at a speed which is vg much much slower than the speed of light in vacuum that is c regardless of the you know respective value of phase velocity so in some cases vg can become vanishingly small implying that the electromagnetic you know mode is basically propagating um, at a very slow speed okay and at that respective frequency it does not transfer energy so in another extreme case where the group velocity vg can also exceed c and that is the case of so called you know superluminal pulse propagation so and that that can happen without contradicting the uh, causality principle and it yet another case of the left handed medium the group velocity vg can have the opposite uh, sign of that of the phase velocity vp okay so all these interesting possibilities are there so slow and ultra slow light have numerous uh, practical applications the related phenomena something like you know dramatic enhancement uh, of light matter interaction such as the nano uh, scale uh, nonlinear effects something like uh, higher harmonic generation wave mixing etc can happen magnetic faraday rotation as well as other electromagnetic properties of the optical media can also be exploited so such an enhancement can facilitate the design of controllable optical delay lines okay phase shifter miniature and efficient optical amplifiers and lasers okay so in addition the ultra slow light might all allow nonlinear interactions down to a single photon level which could significantly benefit the design of ultra sensitive uh, optical switches um, quantum all optical data storage and data processing devices so ultra slow light can also be used in quantum communication and design of novel acoustic optical devices so now let's look at do slow light for next generation devices so what are the current devices device challenges so you can see that the velocity of light in vacuum is c that is you know 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second it's like basically fast enough to make seven and half round you know around the world in a single second or you can say it can move uh, 300 millimeter in 1 nanosecond okay so that is the tremendous speed of light so this ultra high speed is advantages for efficient data communication between two points okay so which are like you know separated by um, global scale right or on a single chip you can use the speed of light for communication however it makes you know control of optical signals in the time domain very difficult because of this very fast speed so slow light is basically a technology now being investigated as a means to overcome this problem so that you can achieve control of a light signal in the time domain itself so next generation information networks the path switching of optical packets at uh, network nodes will become very important and solutions that can perform the task with a high data rate high throughput and also low power consumptions are required so these are the two important things okay which is required for the next generation information networks so engineers are now developing photonic routers that exploit all optical processing that can avoid the elect electrical optical conversion and that also you know 
this this conversion basically introduces a lot of inefficiency. So, here a key device is the optical buffer that is basically a device that temporarily stores and adjusts the timing of optical packets. So, at present the at present the solutions are based on mechanical uh, variable delay line and a combination of different delay lines with an optical switch. Okay? But these approaches are not ideal going to their slow response. Okay? Anything mechanical will time, take time to adjust. Right? So, if, if the uh, velocity of slow light can be controlled with a response speed much faster than this uh, traditional mechanical methods, it could be a solution uh, that can be used not only for buffering but also uh, for various types of time domain uh, processing something like retiming, multiplexing and performing con uh, convolutional uh, integrals. So, what we understood that the control of slow light could improve the phase control in interferometric modulators and uh, phased array beam shapers. In addition, slow light offers the opportunity for compressing optical signals and optical energy in space which would basically help you to reduce the device footprint and also enhance the light matter interaction. So, with enhanced optical gain, absorption and nonlinearities per unit length, numerical op uh, numerous optical devices such as uh, lasers, amplifiers, detectors. Uh, absorption modulators, wavelength converters, all these devices can be miniaturized. So, that is basically setting up the platform for you know compact devices. The definition of velocity that is most meaningful in the case of slow light application is the group velocity Vg, which basically describes the speed of uh, envelope okay, in which the pulse propagates or you can say uh, this basically describes the speed of pulse envelope propagation. Right? So, in general Vg is uh, greatly reduced by a large first order dispersion arising from an optical resonance within the material or the structure itself. So, initially slow light was uh, generated with extremely strong material dispersion. Now, material dispersion is basically a phenomena that occurs when different optical wavelengths travel at different speeds through a particular material. Now, dispersion arising from engineered structures such as you know photonic crystal waveguides can offer uh, promising solutions towards on chip integration of the slow light devices. So, at present photonic crystal slabs um, a high index thin film with a two dimensional array of air holes surrounded by uh, air cladding. So, we have seen this structure many many times in this course. They are widely used because of their intrinsic lossless optical confinement and relatively simple fabrication process. So, the photonic crystal waveguide or PCW it consists of a line defect of missing air holes in the photonic crystal slab. Okay. Try to imagine the structure. We'll show it in the next slide. Okay, so the light uh, propagates through the defect confined by the total internal reflection in the vertical direction and Bragg reflection due to the photonic band gap in the lateral dimension. So it has been known since 2001. The strong dispersion in this uh, waveguide generates uh, slow light in the vicinity of the photonic band edge. Okay. So, when discussing a low group velocity Vg in a photonic crystal waveguide, two important optical properties need to be considered. First, the frequency bandwidth of the effect and second, the higher order dispersion. So, a fundamental limit to the first of these is the delay bandwidth product or DPB, DBP, okay, delay bandwidth product which affects all approaches to slow light. Although a wide bandwidth is uh, desirable in most of the application, but usually it often comes with the price of less delay. So, the DBP means 
means the delay blended product means that the extent to which your group velocity is reduced must be balanced by uh, must be balanced with the required bandwidth for the application that you are considering. And regarding the second issue that is you know higher order dispersion that usually occurs in simple slow light photonic crystal webkites okay, that could uh, severely distort optical signals and this distortion can be eliminated either by combining two PCWs of opposite dispersion characteristics. So, these are basically called um, dispersion compensated slow light devices or by suppressing the higher order dip dispersion itself. So, now we will look into the calculation of delay bandwidth product in more details. So, the concept of delay bandwidth product is a good indication for the highest slow light capacity that the device potentially could provide. So, dbp can be calculated as delay into bandwidth that is delta t into delta f. Okay. So, delta t is basically the delay of light at a wavelength lambda over a propagation length of L and what is delta f that is the frequency bandwidth centered at a frequency f which is nothing but omega by 2 pi okay, this one. So, the time duration of one optical bit is approximately given by you know delta f inverse although an accurate value could depend on the modulation format that you are using. Therefore, the delay bandwidth product is a good indication of the highest buffering capacity that the slow light device potentially provides. Okay. On the other hand, the normalized form can be more useful when devices that have different lengths and different operating frequencies are basically compared. Now, we will look into slow light in highly dispersive structures. For the on chip integration and room temperature operation of slow light devices, highly dispersive structures are more advantageous than uh, dispersive materials. The device uh, with which slow light was first observed in 2001 was a photonic uh, silicon photonic uh, wear waveguide. So, you can call it as PWW uh, photonic wear waveguide which is basically a widely used uh, device in silicon photonics right. So, this is the scanning uh, microscope image of that uh, photonic wear waveguide ok. So, it is basically a simple rectangular channel waveguide with a high index contrast between the silicon core and air or if there is you know silica cladding. So, the propagation loss of this waveguide is sometimes measured from the finness of the internal fabry perot resonance. So, in the first observation you can say that the group index Ng was evaluated from the relationship this one Ng equals lambda square divided by 2 L delta lambda r where lambda r is basically the peak spacing of the resonances. Okay. So, these are the wavelength difference between the resonance peaks okay, um, as around 4 to 5 okay. and this was not caused by the resonance, but uh, by the large dispersion that is arising from the high index contrast between the core and the cladding. Okay, which largely, largely changes the propagation constant that is k in the propagation direction with respect to omega, particularly near the cutoff of the waveguide mode. Okay. So, here you can see the schematic band diagram um, and the group index spectrum of uh, the silicon photonic wire waveguide okay. and this particular straight line shows the light line for the cladding. So, this can be air or this can be silica. Okay. So, we are not mentioning which one is this exactly and this is for the core okay. and these are some of those guided modes and what you can see here you can see that uh, something uh, this, this region is basically giving the slow light which has got a very high uh, group index. Okay. 
So this result suggests that the dispersion term can be comparable to or larger than n itself even in simple waveguide. Now if you go for a more complicated waveguide that is made of a photonic crystal waveguide okay like this you can have much larger dispersion okay. So what you see here this is the electron scanning electron uh, microscope image of the waveguide which is made on a photonic crystal slab and this shows the schematic band diagram and the group index spectrum of this uh, photonic crystal waveguide okay with respect to the frequency okay so you have frequency on this particular axis and these are the uh, group index and normalized wave number so what do you see there is zone folding okay here so because of the so only this part is calculated and this will be the folded version of it okay that we have seen earlier also so going to the zone folded what happens this this particular line shows the light line okay for air and this is the guided mode so what do you see that owing to zone, zone folding of the guided mode band and the coupling of the forward and the backward propagating um, waves it basically so this is one is this way another is this way so they basically uh, forward and backward and they they form a standing wave okay so the first order dispersion basically diverges to infinity and the slow light or in this case you can say stopped light uh, occurs near or exactly at the cutoff point which is also called the band edge over here okay so note that a similar divergence also occurs in any Bragg structure however um, delta n is typically smaller than 0 0.01 in shallow gratings and a low index contrast multilayer stacks. So owing to the high index contrast that you can see in photonic crystal slab the band is uh, strongly deformed near the band edge that you can see here and a large delta, delta n ranging from 0 0.1 to 1 can be obtained okay. So to evaluate the VG that is the group velocity of slow light the following three methods are used. First one is the frequency domain interferometric method which basically measures the spacing of the fabry perot resonances or the mag sander interferometer peaks okay. Second method is the time domain modulation phase shift method which detect, detects the phase of the light that is sinusoidally modulated at gigahertz frequencies and the third method is time domain direct observation of the short optical pulse transmission okay. So a rapid increase in group velocity sorry ng group index from uh, less than 10 to several tens okay um, or several hundreds is observed near the band edge using the first two methods as you can see in the uh, figure right. So this shows the transmission this is the group uh, group index and this is the band edge and you can also see the group index severely uh, seriously increases okay. So the transmission spectrum group index spectrum and the band diagram so this is the band diagram with respect to the normalized frequency for silicon um, photonic crystal waveguide is shown here. For the group index uh, and the band diagram you can see that this particular dots they, they basically give you the experimental uh, results which are obtained from modulation phase shift method whereas the dotted ones are basically the calculation done by effective index approximation. So for the simple uh, photonic crystal waveguide the third method is not easily applied because of severe higher order dispersion. Scanning near field optical microscopy has revealed uh, pulse broadening by capturing snapshots of propagating pulse uh, where the slow light part has been left behind by the first light parts. So that way you can see but it is more or less difficult. 
the major um, component of the higher order dispersion in the group velocity dispersion that is GVD is given by uh, d d omega of v g inverse. So, you can get d square k by d omega square. So, and it usually becomes extremely large near the band edge and a typical group velocity dispersion constant is of the order of 100 picosecond per nanometer per millimeter which is typically 100 times or like 106 times larger than that of the single mode silica fibers. Because of this you know dispersion compensated and zero dispersion uh, slow light are very important right. So, here you can see in figure A um, the schematic operation, the band diagram and the group index spectra for dispersion free slow light devices are plotted. So, this one is basically for dispersion compensated slow light device with a chirped uh, structure. So, you can see the refractive index is basically varying darker is higher refractive index, lighter is lower refractive index and you can also see the pulse is getting stretched that way. And this is basically a same thing for as a uh, zero dispersion slow light device, right. So, with this you can understand even though a high buffering capacity is potentially expected from a large um, delay bandwidth product in a in a photonic crystal uh, waveguide device specifically designed for wide band slow light, the net capacity is finally determined by how the GVD is basically getting suppressed. So, GVD is playing a very important role in the group velocity dispersion. So, now let us focus on the dispersion compensated slow light. Photonic band structure analysis can be used to design a device. Uh, such that a positive or negative group velocity dispersion GVD in the first part of the device is cancelled out by the opposite GVD in the second part. Okay? So, with this philosophy you can actually make a zero dispersion zero dispersion device. Right? For example, a line defect filled with air holes offset by half a period can create a waveguide with the opposite GVD to that of the simple PCW. We will take that example in the coming slides. So, here in this case there are two different types of waveguides which can be coupled together using a chirped structure in which some structural parameters are basically gradually changed along the length of the waveguide. So, that the guided uh, mode band is smoothly shifted. So, each wavelength component of light incident on the first waveguide could reach a corresponding band edge position in the chirped structure. And the band edges of these waveguides are uh, set to always be the same in the chirped structure. Therefore, uh, by conserving uh, the frequency and uh, wave vector or wave number omega and k, you can see light is coupled to the second waveguide and simultaneously delayed near the band edge. Okay? So, finally, the light propagates along and exits the second waveguide. Hence, GVD of slow light is well suppressed over a wide bandwidth that is determined by the chirped range okay? that, that, that completely eliminated at the central frequency. A more sophisticated device uh, based on a similar approach but free from matching and connection issues in the chipped photonic uh, crystal coupled waveguide is shown here. Okay. So, it basically consists of two parallel. So, you can see this is the input PCW, output PCW and here you have two parallel PCWs whose adjacent air holes are partially enlarged and shifted to uh, mold the band shape. So, it maintains even and uh, odd symmetric modes. The even symmetric modes shows a flat band with an inflection point that is sandwiched by the opposite GVD characteristics. With the chipped structure, uh, the slow light condition at the flat band is approximately uh, broadened. 
So, in a device where L equals you know um, 250 micron um, that is basically, basically the length of the device fabricated on a silicon on insulator SOI platform. A delta T that is a delay of 40 picosecond group, group index of the order of 40 to 60 could be experimentally measured with a wavelength bandwidth of 10 to 12 nanometer at you know the telecom wavelength. So, your delta F is basically uh, 1.2 to 1.4 terahertz and you can see the fractional bandwidth that is delta F by F equals typically 0 0.7 percent. Okay? So, what you see here? Um, this basically shows you the measured transmission and delay spectrum. So, the play, pale blue region, this one marks the you know, wide band dispersion compensated slow light. The fine oscillations is caused by the internal resonance and the plotted circles correspond to the, um, the circles correspond to the pulse delay that is observed in figure B. Okay. So, you can see here, this is the delay that has been plotted at all these different uh, wavelengths. Okay. So, um, this tells you the cross correlation trace of optical pulse at each central wavelength, which is basically denoted that color of this graph is denoted by this circles that is plotted here. Okay. So, what do you see that sub picosecond um, optical pulses are maintained at the output with some amount of dispersion even in the case of slow light band. Okay. The maximum delay bandwidth product evaluated was 57 and the corresponding delta n was 0 0.35. However, the net buffering capacity was limited to 12 bit as a result of imperfect dispersion compensation. A delay bandwidth product of around 1000 could be obtained by lengthening the device. So, if you can make the device length to 5 millimeter, you can get it. Uh, and DVP of 1000. However, to achieve a net capacity of 1 kb kilobit, the disorder in the fabricated device must be reduced and the third and the higher order dispersion must be suppressed by further engineering the structure and the band. So, in these devices, the incident optical pulses are basically, uh, they, they are initially specially dispersed and then recovered in the group velocity dispersion compensation process. Therefore, it is effective for suppressing optical nonlinearity caused by the high intensity of the slow light. Now, we look into zero dispersion slow light, how we can uh, achieve that. So, in fiber optics, the term zero dispersion is usually used for zero group velocity dispersion GVD, right. But if the simple photonic crystal waveguide is modified so as to give a straight guided mode band, any higher order dispersion components can be eliminated. Although the band cannot actually be completely straight, such dispersion components can be effectively reduced by this particular approach. In contrast to dispersion compensated slow light, the pulse shape is also compressed in space and accordingly its internal intensity is enhanced as you can see in this particular figure. So, it shows compression in space. Okay? So, this is input pulse, this is output pulse and this is slow light pulse which is basically compressed in space. So, this is the corresponding plot of frequency versus wave number and this is the group velocity versus frequency. Okay? Therefore, the approach is effective for enhancement of optical nonlinearities. So, if you can compress, you can in, uh, you know excite more nonlinear effects. There are a variety of ways to optimize the structure of a device to obtain a straight band. So, a PCW can be modified um, 
for this purpose by reducing the diameter of the innermost air holes that you can see here so this is the defect okay so you can reduce the diameter of the innermost air holes adjacent to the line defect and then you can increase the diameter of the other air holes as you can see here so this is the line defect so adjacent you can make this air holes smaller in radius which is marked here with r bar or r prime and then these are basically the standard ones or comparatively larger than this ones so this brings the guided mode and uh, the slab mode bands together and they give rise to their anti crossing and when this behavior is ap appropriately controlled the guided mode band is basically straightened so it's not a very trivial task it requires a bit of you know uh, tailoring of these diameters to find out which case you'll be able to get the guided band straighten up it results in a step like increase in ng near the band edge and a nearly flat spectrum of the group index ng at the step so the fine tuning of the two air hole diameters okay this and this could balance the group index and the bandwidth so this type of slow light has been observed with values of delta t of the order of 40 to 50 picosecond and group index to be between 30 and 37 are evaluated for wavelength bandwidth of 5 to 10 nanometer respectively and this is considered for l equals 400 micrometer at 1550 nanometer wavelength okay so here the graph shows the group index okay and the band structure for the two ratios of air holes so here r bar by r is 0 0.89 so this is how it changes and here r by bar, r bar r prime by r is basically 0 0.86 for these two cases so once again r prime is basically the smaller radius and r is the standard radius and what is this pale blue region it indicates the step like increase in uh, group index okay that you see here okay and uh, it shows the low dispersion slow light the transmission of sub picosecond optical pulses was also observed um, in these cases as evidence of the low higher order dispersion. So here the group index NG is calculated using modulation phase shift method where the shift of phase phi between the input and the output ends okay if you remember the structure okay. So input and output ends of the waveguide is measured for sinusoidally modulated light which has a frequency of omega m and from that you can find out what is the phase and using the modulation phase shift method you can find out what is the group index and that is basically plotted here and in this case the corresponding delay bandwidth product comes as to be 56 and delta n is 0 0.21 so what we understood the slow light with a group velocity several tens or several hundreds of times lower than the speed of light in vacuum c is basically attainable with the present photonic crystal waveguide based technology and this is an impressive result when considering the probable bandwidth requirement for uh, the future data traffic which is above 40 gigahertz the delay bandwidth product will soon reach to 100 or you know 100 to 1000 by increasing the device length to millimeter or centimeter scale and by reducing the extrins extrinsic losses dispersion management and uh, tunability will add greatly to the value of slow light Going to dispersion compensated and zero dispersion structure, slow propagation of sub picosecond optical pulses have been um, confirmed. So that is that's a big achievement, sub picosecond scale. So wide range 
delay tuning has also been achieved for dispersion compensated slow lights. Okay. This unique functionality was previously only available for mechanically variable delay lines okay, with commercial devices offering you know, uh, tuning response time of the order of millisecond time scale. Okay. So, now with you know the absolute value of delay in photonic crystal devices is limited to less than 1 nanosecond. So, you can understand the improvement that can be achieved using this kind of slow light devices in photonic crystal waveguides. The extrinsic loss mainly due to uh, light scattering is the most critical problem to overcome and must be suppressed by further structure optimization and improvements in the fabrication process of this waveguides. Zero dispersion slow light pulses could enable the study of enhanced light matter interaction and in particular the enhancement of optical nonlinearities has started to be observed experimentally which is basically of great interest for adding complex functions to photonic uh, crystal integrated circuits. So, with that we will conclude this lecture and we will start discussion about you know next generation devices such as multiplexers, mode splitters and lasers using photonic crystal in the next lecture will, which will be the final lecture of this course and in case you have got any queries on this particular lecture you can drop an email mentioning MOOC, Photonic Crystal and the lecture number on the subject line to this particular email address. Thank you.